to Williams and Bloom here on a Sunday. I should have poured us a glass of Cody Road. That's okay. I didn't even think about it tonight. It's kind of a it's been a season long... wrap. But I you 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 were in Boston for four days. What was the what was the beverage of choice? Because you can't get Cody Road out there, unfortunately. No, I had a lot of uh, Guinness. Guinness. They do it. There's a ton of Irish. A lot of Irish bars. Yeah. yeah, just Irish bars. Left and right. Everywhere yeah. out there. Yeah. So that that was the big okay. thing for yeah. me was the the Guinness. And I don't drink Guinness very often. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know, not really a connoisseur. I did a lot so. of like Irish Reds and 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 that type of stuff. Um. Yeah, Boston was cool. We can, we can talk about that. I want to thank our presenting sponsor, of course, Mechdyne, the Mechdyne Corporation, uh, for bringing you Williams and Bloom every Sunday, every Wednesday, here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. Uh, we are in the Wild Rose Casino Studios, and hey, I am really amped up about uh, just this week in general, only in the sense that we're adding some premium subscribers like by the minute right now because people are so as you should yeah people people are so excited about the the portal if there's a week yeah it is this, this is the week this is the week it's gonna be busy i landed i knew it was coming but i landed from boston on on saturday afternoon and it was like boom um it's it's coming yep iowa state's got four guys in the portal uh, we've already done some reporting about one visitor coming this week. I know there's going to be a second as well. Um, and, and, and real quick, I also I want to, before we get into all this stuff, we have so much to get into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the reason we, we do it this way, it's not like, oh, we're withholding information. So there's what's called sensitive information that um, for, for one reason or another, People don't want all over Twitter and it's a very competitive, you know, this more than me. And oftentimes you're trying to work in the dark a little bit. Um, so like, that's why we are, that's why we primarily do it this way. So for instance, like the Omaha blue deal yesterday, I reported that to our premium subscribers, which was one thing. Yep. Um, and then it starts floating around Twitter and it was like, Oh, it's going to happen today okay, we can, we're just going to make this live now. Right. Cause the, the sensitive aspect of it, of it was gone. So it's like, I, I just wanted to explain that we're not just trying to be. No, you're not holding out just yeah. to, to help out. because you, it, And we're not doing it just to, Oh, we're not going to do it. We're just trying to get subscribers. Sure. We want that. But the reason we can do it in the back end is because you don't have hundreds of thousands of, other coaching staff that's going to run with it. Yeah. Well, and, even, and then honestly, the stuff you put on premium, a lot of it's not locked in 100%. Correct. Either. It's like, Hey, this is what I'm hearing. This could change. You just like, think about, I mean, the coaching searches from years past where you weren't quite sure, but you, you tried to be, that's the great thing about, about what you do on premium. You're not just making stuff up like some of those no. Twitter guys, but also not a lot of it's not 100% locked in. You still broke the Omaha story today yes this morning i mean you had a pretty good idea i think probably last night but you want to make sure uh, i reported it to our premium subscribers that it was going to happen at like nine o'clock or something but, but the point is you, you you get info you try and keep those folks in but with the understanding of if they share that publicly that's a big no-no correct and you'll um, get kicked and out. you'll get kicked out so that's, out of the club. it's a nice way, again, to provide some value while also not being 100% sure of what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's just on top of it, I hope you enjoy what we do. And when you have a subscription, like, I hope it's worth it to you. But you're also, you fund podcasts, you fund our, like, Rob Gray and his writing and Connor's job and Jacqueline and our wrestling coverage and all that stuff. So I, I just wanted to say that because this, this is a fun week in that sense. It is. It's also a pretty stressful week because there's so many moving parts your world I, i'm sure is crazy one of the things i hate about this is i'd love to be sitting here and kind of celebrating the great basketball season yeah which we'll do it's, some of it, but it's really kind of moved past that since thursday it's crazy you no know, i that was kind of my takeaway this weekend is after iowa state lost i mean i watched the games but man your heart's just not in it as much because you're so worried about 
what's going to happen next year. Uh, I mean, I probably caught half the Duke North NC State game today just because you you know you're on the phone, you're you're trying to figure out what's going on for uh, next year's team, and this week's going to be very busy. It's another part of the unfortunate timing with the portal. It just it doesn't make sense. I don't know if they're going to change it at all, but it's almost like the the season's over. Nope, you know we'll watch the final four, but you're you're worried more about what's going to be next year now. Yeah, definitely, and. It's just wild, like how how much the fans are into the portal. Like it, it's, it's like the NFL free agency. It really is. Yeah. It's there's the hottest no, thing. There's it's no the hottest, out. It's that the time. hottest thing I've ever seen since I've been running a fan site. As far as interest goes, like the the interest in the portal is higher than the interest of most games. Like I, I truly mean that. it's it's crazy. Well, but I, you- I I but in the same boat, I understand it especially when you're good, right? Like Iowa State has a good team. <laughs> that, that's the thing is this impacts every single program. You know, obviously the your other traffic that you'll get a lot of times would be coaching searches. Yeah. But not every school is doing a coaching search at the same time. This is literally what's happening. Mm-hmm. Is the, all these teams are turning over half the roster. Portions of their roster yeah. all at the same half time. Half is conservative. And it all has to be done in a month. It's crazy. But I actually, I thank goodness that TJ's Man. and his roster control situation is well, really good. And we'll talk about all of what's happened here in the last 10 days. But um, never been more confident about where Iowa State sits in the higher, hierarchy of things than right now. There, There's a lot that has to happen. They're just getting started. I will say this, and I've, I've kind of outlined it most of, for the most part for our subscribers. If the plan hits... And the this next month goes the way they want it to. Iowa State should be a preseason top ten team next year. Um, it what's what's so interesting about this is You're right, and I I respect this out of Iowa State fans. Okay, because I'm the same way. I long for the days of man that Caden Fish. I've been watching him warm up. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. I think that he could be I want I can't wait to see what he does next year. Or more uh mainstream is the Omaha Blue thing, right? Yep. Like we all watched him in high school. The his recruitment was Donald's all American. He had his moment against Kansas State in the Big Twelve tournament. And there's a lot of these people that are like, Well, this is bullshit. Like, we're not even gonna get to see him play. I get it. Um, here would be my response to it. Is in 2024, you'd rather have a coach that's quick. Yep. That's quick to move and and looking to upgrade the roster. And what's great about this is if I'm Jackson Pavletsky today, I could have stayed at Iowa State. Sure. And I would have had a similar role. Yep. Probably for the next two years. But now I have, I can take this great experience I had. Made some money, learned playing under Tame and Lipsy, and right became a lot better defender, much better defender. Yep. And I'm going to go turn into Clay Custer probably. I, he'll probably end up, I would say, in the Mountain West and right? do quite well. Yeah. So or the Valley, or the Valley, like, Valley, Valley would be of, Valley and, would be and he's going to yeah. be a first team All League wherever he goes at that level. So my point is, this is a good this is a good thing for the individuals, and. What I'm seeing with Iowa State, and again, it hasn't happened yet. Like, the hell, tomorrow something crazy could happen in the portal that we, it's completely unforeseen. Some uncle got a call, or right? Like, Fair, this stuff is crazy. Yep, still don't know. But so it keeps us up at night. If, if it hits the way they're, they're hoping it does, this is going to be a hell of an offseason for Iowa State. Yeah, I mean, I, as far as upgrading the roster now, you, sure. You hope that Jelani Hamilton goes off and has a great career. He very well might. Yeah. Awesome. By the way, like all these guys, yeah. I'm going to miss them as people. I like, am they're too. Just good. They're, none of them are. It's not they're a good character dudes. situation. I Omaha. love Omaha, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Like he's just phenomenal. Yeah. But you're so this is where we're at. I mean, the, the college athletics are professional now, and I'm going to be honest. Iowa State's window right now is to win a championship. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long that window is going to last. You hope it's for a decade. But Iowa State knows with those three guards, with those three guards, and, and Milan, and Milan, your window is right now. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. So if if you want to go for it all, it's just like 
It's just like the baseball team, the Cubs back in 2016. Instead of saying, you know what, we're going to let our young guys develop. Nope, we're going to go get Araldis Chapman, well, and we're sucks, going for it. And it sucks you know? to be a developmental guy because none of those guys had an opportunity on the court to 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 prove anything. But the the problem is to be a developmental guy in the Big 12 right now is really it's different. Hard. And it's like, okay, you develop them like you did with Hunter and then he can just leave, right? Like it's a really it's a tough that, spot for everybody. I'm your window is year to year. It, mm-hmm. it just until the rules change, you have to do this. Is Iowa State is I think Iowa State maxed out its roster last year based yes. on what we had. Totally agree. Um I think I think Iowa State did a great job. Uh thankfully, thanks to Cyclone Nation, the NIL situation is a little bit better. And so that's going to allow in my opinion Iowa State to play you know, a little bit above where we were last year, potentially get some guys um, that can help out. And Iowa State knows with the core group coming back, then we hope they all come back, because mm-hmm. the, the portal's still open, that you add some strategic pieces, you go from, oh man, everything has to go right, to top 10 right away. Mm-hmm. And th- you're, this is an Iowa State team, the roster-wise, before last year started, what, 38th in Ken Palm, 40th? Mm-hmm. Like, very rarely do teams get all the way up in the top 10 from that range. And they'll be in the top 10. Iowa State's right? going to be in the top yeah. 10. And and that's where this staff is very much like, we're not wasting this window. Would we love to have Jelani and Caden and Omaha develop for two, three, four years? Absolutely. It's not the way it works anymore. Mm-hmm. And so while the window is here, you better bust through it. And I'll, I'll say this on the Omaha thing. From what I, I mean, the guy who just came in from Charlotte's above him. No, oh, there's no, well, he's Watts, 6'10". Yeah, Watson's above him. Clearly, uh, based on this year, um, Milan is. Milan is. And if if they hit on what they're going to try to hit on, Omaha's looking to be in the same spot same next spot. year unless he takes, like, a huge jump. And, it's man, possible. I, and, and I hope he does. Yeah, same. You know, I want him to. Like, I... I hope he does that and goes and has this phenomenal career elsewhere. I'm rooting for him. But I'm saying, like, when you're when you're the coach and you're laying out the plan to the guys in your Omaha, you're being like, oh, man, like, I, I want to increase my role, and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it here. Yep. Yep. I was, again, it's, it's just like you, you want to be older. Iowa State really believes that next year could be a year where they aren't just a, Hey, you know, fun story. And I, I think this Iowa state team is good enough to make a final four clearly um, did not play great on Thursday. And then UConn was a train rolling downhill. That would have been tough regardless. Yeah. But I, it, depending on, and, and honestly, the staff is so good. They're perfectionists. They know what their weaknesses are and they're trying to address those right now. And, and honestly, I thought Illinois did a great job of, sagging off Hassan and, and Rob mm-hmm. and said, all right, we're playing five on three in the middle here because your bigs can't shoot. Iowa State knows that's a weakness. Iowa State is trying to address that. And so there's things you can do, and you might say, hey, it'd be nice to have these guys for two, three, and four years, but there's no guarantee that Milan's going to be back for year three because he might go to the NBA. And, you know, what happens? To, I mean, Keyshawn and Kurt graduate. So it makes sense if you have this group that you know can do it, add to it, don't wait on some other people that you hope get there. Correct. I think it's a smart move. It's just so different. It's it doesn't for, it, for it, most it, fans it like to understand because college athletics has completely been turned on its head from what we all grew up with. You have to look at it as I. It's unfortunate. You're like a GM I, instead. You of, are. Yeah. TJ's a GM, and you're trying to build the best roster possible for the next year. And just like the Niners window in footballs right now, because mm-hmm. Brock's got. Yeah, less of a salary. Uh, Iowa State's in a situation now where uh, they've got guys that want to be here, and now you can build around those core four or five guys and get some people that want to win. So, you, so it's twofold. Number one, NIL is a little bit better, and then two, you've proven you can win. You're proven you're probably going to be in the top ten. So, if I'm a junior, senior, twenty two, twenty three year old, and my goal is to not only get a little NIL but also win at an extremely high level and play under a, a system I know is going to make me better, Iowa State makes a lot of sense for me. I talked with Milan Momchilovic before the game um, in Boston, so it would have been Wednesday, and basically told me, I, I, I kind of knew it, 
but I, it was the first I had heard him really talk about it, which that was why he came to Iowa state was because he's like, I, I knew that I was a pretty good offensive player. Yep. You know, that I could, that I could do this. He's like, I knew that I was not at their level defensively and that they wouldn't play me unless I did it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing yeah. the videos out there. Yeah. No, it's great. It. it was actually, uh, and it, it was super cool. And I, I would say like, man, like, look at, uh, look at Curtis Jones now going into next year. Right. Like he was a guy who got a lot of shit early on early. cause he, he couldn't yep. make a shot. Yep. And then now, like, he's probably their best offensive player. Am I wrong? He was on Thursday. I mean, I'm just saying, like, yeah. since that TCU game, well, that's is he their most efficient? Uh, he's probably. I'm not saying he's the best no, player on the probably, team. I bet he has been the most efficient offensive. That's player. what I'm. That's yeah. That's the point I'm trying. Well, to. and then Stan, Van Gundy kept saying on the on telecast that I watched three times. Man, Curtis is the only guy. who was like, well, yeah, you, at times he was on Thursday. But you're to that point. The Iowa State is a super attractive job for somebody in the portal or job, uh, a team landing for, spot. Yeah, because, especially a big because okay. of all these guards. Exactly, and they're not just good guards, but they're unselfish guards. There's not really of those group somebody that needs 25 shots a game. You know, I think that's where some of these portal things are going to have issues. Uh, in just a, it's, it's not a great example, but I'll, I'll try and make it here. The reason why maybe the Iowa women's basketball team struggled to attract talent last off season. Because you know if you go to the Iowa women's team, you're not getting the ball. I mean, you're going to be a, a secondary player. The nice thing with Iowa State is these guys that they're going to bring in all could be the guy. Now, you still got some really good dudes, but Taman is such a team-first guy. He's going to get his numbers, but he's never going to shoot it 20 times. Mm -hmm. And so Iowa State is a super attractive spot because you have a great culture, you've got a great coach, and you got people that are, going to, are fun to play with and play for. And... You, you guys, I think this is going to be a fun week. You know, I know it's a bummer that it ended like it did. Um, that's the great we'll get part to that about, game about we'll college talk. athletics is it, it – there's no time to, to ne mourn anymore. Like, you're right into the next year. Never more than now. Yeah. Right? Like, this is – they they literally had their team meetings the day after they got home, and boom. Like, and, and the thing is, too, again, it's like – it's not like – it's great for the players if they want to move on. Like they have the opportunity now to, you know what? I learned this about myself. Yep. I would hope that Pavletsky would go feel really good about this and be like, Hey, you know, I didn't play as much as I wanted to, but I was a really effective player on a top 10 team. Mm -hmm. When I got in there, the moments were not too big for me. And he takes that and he transfers to you and I, I'm just throwing out a, and he dominates. You know, and becomes Clayton Custer. That would be my my hope for and, a guy like that. And then Omaha, too. Yeah. I hope Omaha Baloo goes down a level for a year and gets on the court. Go somewhere where you can play a ton and get experience. Yeah, if that's, what that's my goal for I you. know Iowa State fans are going to keep an eye on him, as they should. Again, good dude. Um, did everything the right way. I Don't get caught up in if he goes somewhere and plays really well. I, I mean, it's very possible. What we said earlier, he was going to be behind three to four guys next year at Iowa State if he came back. It, it seemed to me that he wants to go somewhere and play. If he goes and plays, blame get those reps, he yeah. could be a really productive guy eventually. I don't know if it's going to be next year. I don't know if it's going to be the year after that. If I'm Baloo's people, I'm putting him in, at Drake. I'm just throwing out a name. Yeah. And just go out there and let your athleticism and get on the court. Just he, And then, man, you do that. And then you're a former McDonald's All American. Now you've played. You average 15 a game in the Valley. Then you can go get get some high dollar. You offers. know the the, in, the interesting part is you're right because you can Hell, transfer. You come back to Iowa you State. Could, you could transfer any. You can transfer every year now. Mm -hmm. There there is something too, and I, that's why actually it's it's pretty cool that both Fish and Hamilton redshirted because they got four years. Yeah. There's nothing stopping those guys from going down. Let's say going down a level, whatever that means. They have a great year or two. They're back in the portal. Then they can really well, look jump at up. What Darwin Stone Dubar did. Great example. Former Iowa State guy, yep. under prom, started a few games. He did. Uh, really was not. It, it didn't was, look great, but I don't think he ready. had. A, I don't think he had a great culture around him to really. That was a. That was quite the year. Yeah. So he transferred, and now he's like the one of the best names in the entire portal, yep. right? 
Yep, 6'8 six, eight, six, eight guy that can do a little bit of everything, well, score Schick, 18 points a game. He, I mean, he reminded me a little bit of Omaha. When you just look at him. Yeah, physically. As a freshman, you're like, damn. Yeah, his, how is this guy not on the floor? Right? Very, and, very similar. And he started shooting it better as he got older, and now he'll get paid. He's going to go somewhere. He's going to go make close to a million dollars. Yeah, next year. yeah, it'll be a lot. It'll be a lot. But good for him. I mean, that's that's the neat part. Is It's not the end of the world for these guys. And it, it sure, did they have good experiences here? Yes. I'm sure they're probably disappointed that they didn't, you know, they can't Everybody stay. wants to play. Everyone wants to play. But in the long run, if these are the rules, as a coach, I want somebody who's going to be aggressive in this world, not wait and passive. Because if you wait, we have seen it across the other side of the state. Yeah, if you wait, that's you will exam. get buried. That's You're going to get buried because you can't you can't rely on four and five year people anymore. You, you just evolve can't. or you die. It is not going to work. And until they change the rules with the transfer situation as it is, you have to be proactive every single year. And that's why I think Iowa State's roster, on its face, is probably going to be a top ten roster next year, which is pretty cool. Williams Bloom here on your Sunday night, the thirty first. Uh, it's eight o'clock. Who knows? You know, half the roster could be gone by the time we get off the air. I'm kidding. Sorry, I don't want to give Bloom a heart attack. I uh, <laughs> want to thank some of our great sponsors. Um, mark your calendar, ladies and gentlemen. Wednesday, it's Forever True Day, two thousand twenty four, with our friends from the Iowa State University Foundation. Twenty four hours of Cyclone Power, baby. Woo! It's the 3rd and the 4th. It starts at noon. Do not make your gift. until. So we are making a challenge to the Cyclone Fanatic listeners and users. We're going to have our own link, and we want to track and see if we can beat what we did last year. I'll have that everywhere uh, for you guys on Wednesday. Again, it's uh, really a brilliant way that they're doing this now. It's really smart stuff from our friends over at the foundations. I, That's I coming a, up on Wednesday. This is hey, advertising is pretty cool. Sometimes I had a guy reach out to me this week that wants to do a scholarship in vet med. Oh, so I'm going to get him cool. hooked up over there here this week. So I had an idea. I like the vet med crew. Tell me if could I make a scholarship mm -hmm. to create a fund. For Iowa State Daily Riders to be able to cover things like the NCAA tournament to pay for travel. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it wouldn't necessarily go to one student. Nope. But it would go to... That is called a, that's a, a program opportunity. Absolutely. I'll hook you up. I was I thinking about guy, that, that. My guy, Jens. My guy, Jens. And, my, my boys... Uh, I like that idea. They weren't there, and it kind of hurt me that they didn't get to go out there. And I'm like, well, I get it, though. It's not like the daily's swimming in money. Oh, for sure. That's not any uh, – that was expensive. Well, they don't even have, like, the paper every day now, like when we were in college. No, I was thinking about that. That's cool. There. So, actually, when I was in the College of Business, one of the cooler things I got to do, I set up a fund for a finance guy who was in, in Chicago, and he paid for – the investment clubs, there's a, a student group on campus. They they literally have $50,000 a year they play with. They just sit around like with Bitcoin. No, it's not Bitcoin. It's like they do, and they have to come with the, like stock review systems and they do the whole cool the whole thing. Anyway, he paid uh, a amount per year so that they could come out to his office to visit him and other brokers in the Chicago downtown. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Just to get some real hands-on experience. So yeah, it's just a very similar deal. Interesting. All right. Yeah, good idea. All right. Shout out I'll to... I'll tip into that. Yeah, I think it guys. could be really cool. Yeah. I think it could be really cool. Uh, I also want to thank our friends over at Terraplex Ag. They are... Uh, we've told you about them a lot. This this uh, really a cutting edge company that if you are a farmer out there and you're not getting into the drone technology, you will get left behind. It's kind of like the portal. You either go portaling or you're going to get left behind. <laughs> TerraplexAg.com is where you can learn more about all of the drone technology that they have to offer. I've flown some of these myself. It's freaking awesome. TerraplexAg.com. Um, okay, so that's the situation with the portal. It's going to be a busy week, everybody. It's going to be a busy week. Buckle up. Yep. And uh, this will be another week of not a lot of sleep probably for, for either one of us, but we... We're okay. You know, we're hanging in there. Uh, we're going to roll. The other one I would like to know is Jalen Bristow yes. is out on the women's side. Sucks. 
does. didn't come. I had started hearing rumblings about a month and a half ago. Uh, and I think that there's a decent chance she ends up at a big 12 school. We'll see. I won't say anything more. Cause again, it's, it's kind of, it's more hearsay than it is fact. The other two departures, I believe were not surprises Correct. to the staff situation there. You probably want to add one to two more players. I would think through the portal. Yes. To support what is already there. But yeah. again, though, Similar. you're looking at a roster upgrade. I would, it, I would hope I would with uh, the, with the gal from LSU yeah, coming Williams. in as well. Yep. Like you gotta, you gotta factor that in. Same with men's with rock. Yeah. And, J- and you did some reporting on him. He's going to play. Well, he, he's been, he's you know, been, he's been getting better by the week. I think I, we kind of forget about him. I was told that the goal would be 10 to 15 minutes mm-hmm. a game next year, but he's got to have a big off season like this is good, but he seems to be a young man that really worked hard. He's a worker. And the, the other thing I would point out is really pretty brilliant move by the staff to get him in for that red shirt oh. year when they did. Right, you Massive. look back at that now, and you're like, "Oh, wow! Well, he, there's no way he would have been ready." Still, this is four years. There, yeah, he would yeah. not have. And he's a guy. You, you talk about what will make this Iowa State team better. It's pretty clearly when you're number one or number two in defense. Defense is still going to be pretty good. Yeah, he'll help some at the rim. He's got length to him, but he can step out and shoot. And you know, love Rob, love Hassan. Those guys could not make a jump shot. And JT can, so it just adds a different dimension. I think you, what you're going to see for Iowa State in the next seven to ten days is get some verse. Look at the schools that have advanced; they have almost every single one of them multiple six six to six eight guys that can do everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, that is the most. Well, they have a handful of Momchilovich types. Exactly, yeah. but but it's it's. But I not think he's just probably sh- more dynamic than most. He will be. Able yeah. To. It, once Milan learns to really put on the floor and get his yeah. space and he has help around him, he's going to be impossible to stop. I think he's going to be great. I'm, that guy, the sky is the limit. But you, if you get six, you know, those six five to six eight guys, dribble, pass, drive it, shoot. Iowa State's offense becomes really difficult to guard. The way Taman can shoot, Curtis can shoot, Keyshawn's ability to drive, and if you get those bigs that can spread it out a little bit more, whew, this team, this team has a chance to be. Be really, really good. If you're Bill Finley, what are you targeting? Yeah, I mean, so it's interesting because Emily's back, which is great. You're not going to find a player of Bristow's type on the transfer market, I wouldn't think. No. And, Long and, and, you know, that type. She's a unique, she's a unique person. Um, you know, I think that what William Williams does very similar things than Bristow. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about yeah, Williams. I, mean, she's, I need to learn more about her. She, so Tommy Birch had a nice piece on her in the register. Yeah, I mean recently. another. I always say this. It's like a broken record. Great kid. Um, I I don't know. Don't want to get the hopes like she's gonna, she's not gonna be like a fifteen point a game person. Yeah, but she's somebody who can come in, maybe able to start. You know, good size can guard multiple positions, can rebound a little bit, and can shoot. So she's gonna she's gonna help. And then the the gal coming in from Johnston. Uh, Tank, tank or tanky. She's she'll play too. She's a great shooter. Yeah. So she she spreads the floor out. So if, again, if I've got my GM hat on and I'm Coach Bill, I'm trying to get it's, just like it's the men. Really hard with all those some, scholarships. Some slashers and drivers and somebody to take some of the pressure off Emily uh, from a ball handling perspective. In the women's game, what do they have? Fifteen. It's they, I, I mean, Iowa State doesn't use them all. No, I know it's like impossible. Yeah, to. it's because it's it's Title Nine. Yeah, no, I understand yeah. it. Yeah. I understand why, but like that's just a lot for yeah. a sport that only plays five people. It, totally. And I would say And I, like the men rarely use thirteen. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah, so you're looking you're dead on. So I think trying to find another shooter and then a ball handler, maybe find ball, another Hannah Bellinger. Well, exactly. So I that's take where, that right now. I Go to the, the D two. The Johnston kid's gonna play that role. I mean, the the Johnston kid's a knock knock down shooter, really, really high end shooter. Okay, but you know, freshman, not yeah. quite sure yet. I would think that Kelsey Jones would make more shots next year. Yes, too. she. You know, that would be one that I think will probably take a pretty big step. I I agree with that. Yeah, and then Addie's Addie's ceiling is still really high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's and, and I, what is Addie? She's She's Bridget Carlton mixed with Chelsea Poppins. Yeah, is that what we I came like up that. with? 
I like that. It's pretty tough. But you're to, looking. Uh, tough you can Iowa State's there. gonna Iowa State will add a couple in the portal. I would guess clearly, and um, you know that's a team that'll be definitely in the top twenty five starting next year, if not top fifteen. With if you bring back Crooks, who has only begun to get the amount of attention she's going to get by next fall. Are you rooting for Iowa or Kim Mulkey on Monday night? Um, Just asking you for your the officials. <laughs> Williams and Bloom. I'm waiting for multiple technical fouls. Williams and Bloom Sunday. We're always anarchy. I want our anarchy. friend Colin Newell and the his his friends over at Farm Bureau Financial Services. Save me a thousand. Saved our buddy Chris Shipley two thousand. Saved Bloom six hundred a year. I was with the guy out in Boston, and he brought it up to me. He goes, "Is this? This is exactly what he says. It was Belas. Yeah. He goes, "Is this Colin Newell really saving you guys all this? I'm like, I swear to God." Also, I'm not, I'll send you my statement. Yeah, like he last. absolutely is. Uh, Colin, Brewell, Colin Newell, Farm Bureau. Plus, we're excellent drivers. Financial helps, and we're old now. Services. Also, our friends at the Ivy College Business at Iowa State. We love them. And I got to hammer Dean Spalding next time I see him about Bitcoin. It's being it's, over 70,000. It's running now. Yeah. It's maybe 100,000 by the next time I see. By the next time He's I see killed. Dean Spalding. Hey. Dean Spalding, if you get caught, catch wind of this, just shoot me a text. Say hello. Say <laughs> Williams is still an idiot. You can yeah. do it. I hope. I hope Di- that uh, say diversify, Williams. Diversify. I hope Dean. I hope Dean Spalding was uh, buying on the way down, like I was, <laughs> uh, to the to the Bitcoin BTC. Uh, okay, so that game on Thursday night, really, uh, I'm going to be on uh, sickening, yeah. uh, a sickening game. The the type of game. Where when we are in our fifties doing a summer series, we'll be like, God damn it, that game. It, a little bit like Boston. that Purdue game. Remember when Iowa State didn't give the ball to Deontay Burton until the second half? Yeah, I mean, not quite the same, but just. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say this was like negligent coaching. No, like it wasn't negligent game there. coaching. It was just, but it was. Uh, Iowa State the, was not the, good. The, for the ten minutes. The layup that Keyshawn missed. Yep. And then the lob to Trey. Trey. Those two plays will just haunt us, haunt because Iowa State really. I, I, Brent, I tell me if you think I'm being too much. I think Iowa State wins six and a half to eight times out of ten against that team on a neutral court. Well, I, am I am I being nuts? No, is that I don't too think much? So. Is that I mean, too much? Here, tell me if you think it's too much. Here's what they. It was a great recipe for them early. If yeah, that game goes another five well, minutes. Give I me State any win. other. So Kissinger, I don't know if I told you. Yeah, this. Me, yeah, he was calling a Big Twelve game. Okay, and those other two guys were calling whatever. Yes. they called everything. So Kissinger was getting annoyed. You could see it. Interestingly, guess how many fouls were called on Iowa State. I'm I'm going to a point here. Uh, twenty three. Okay, I was going to say twenty one. That was the most of the season. Wow. It was a total everything that we knew it couldn't was, happen. It, right. And right from the jump, you got neutered from your aggressiveness. And Iowa State very much like, oh, no. And then the other part that really hurt them was the length of Illinois. It was just like that VCU game yeah. or the Virginia Tech game. Even Washington or State Washington early. Washington State, where yeah. you're like, wow, they're, they're so tall. It's like it, then that second half, Iowa State finally figured out these guys aren't good if you just get around them. And they started running some different stuff. When I Iowa they, State got within four in the first five minutes, I would have bet my mortgage that Iowa State was going to win by I double thought, digits. I thought, so I thought just, they were yeah, going to blow them and, out, Brent. And then Shannon got his fourth foul. Yeah, I mean, every, and then it's just you couldn't. God, I'm pissed. Couldn't get over. You couldn't make you couldn't make the shots inside. Like there was yeah too many miss layups many, and bunnies. Yeah, and, and again, Illinois, is, they had some guys. I Shannon was great. And and I, what TJ said after the game was he's dead on. You let him get too comfortable early because I think you're a little bit fearful of the foul trouble. And I I will give Brad Underwood credit. I mean, if you go back, oh. and, they knew exactly what Iowa State was going to do with the trap. He was in they, the first four and under. They did a great job on both ends. Yeah, because they, they scouted Iowa they, State. It and it really threw Iowa State off in that first ten minutes of they they were doing the the total drop on Rob and Hassan and Iowa State's like whoa what do we like There's too much space up here. Uh, and and then Milan just struggled. He tried. They tried. They tried to get him on the. They the tried a bunch of stuff. He the just shots had a bad he was game. making in the last two weeks. Yeah, he, he didn't just make. Didn't make. And and you 
you only turn them over 12 times. So Illinois did a nice job of handling the ball. Four or five points off of turnovers. Yep, it just it <laughs> was the perfect recipe of how do you beat Iowa State. Illinois did great. Now, Illinois shot awful from the free throw line. Which is a huge point to make when, when I'm getting all jumpy about Iowa State. Because Illinois should have been up a lot oh, more. Oh my they gosh. Were. Iowa State caught some huge like fifteen of yes. twenty nine is disgusting from the free throw line. Yes. Iowa State in theory what what scared me about the game at halftime is it felt like Iowa State should have only been down like five with all the missed free throws. And then Illinois had a stretch where they missed like eight shots yeah. in a row at the end of the first half. Yeah. So it's not like they were just lighting things they, up. Nope. Iowa State was just that bad. Correct. Correct. It was one of those games where your offense was poor for the first half, and then you figured it out a little bit, and but never, never could quite get there. I, I would say played a C game, you know, mm-hmm. and that's one of those games where you needed at least a B minus, and it didn't, it didn't play a B. You win by you seven, win by seven. To, yeah, I mean, again, Illinois is a nice team. The length bothered I. Yeah, they're say. good. I'm not saying they suck. I just, I, I don't. That game, I'd rather go and play UConn and lose by thirteen and play well. Yeah, like I didn't think Iowa State played well. No, I did, did not, did not, and and thank goodness for Curtis Jones, or else yeah. that would have been really, really rough. Uh, but I, I thought once Iowa State figured out get Taman going, get Keyshawn going to the rim, Keyshawn was great that first eight minutes, and then he missed that layup, and then he kind of lost some of his his juice a little bit too. Oh, dude, he was on fire. But there for, for that about for five that stretch, minutes. he was so good, and it's like, man, there's when he's on like that, there's nobody can stay in front of him, but. Couldn't really take advantage. Then I almost think got it got in Iowa State's head when Shannon came back in that he had the four fouls, that they lost the plot a little bit of trying to go at him too much, that it the whole thing I it just the the ball movement was weird. It was like they Iowa State got stuck. They were forcing a bunch of stuff. It was really the one of the first times this year I thought Iowa State's eagle, for the lack of a better term, kind of got in the way of the whole. Keyshawn told me after the game that he thought he he basically was like, we're, we haven't played down like that very much. And he he's like, we just got sped they up. Forced, they forced a bunch. Yeah. You know, we just, I don't think they were panicking. I think no. they just, the length. Yep. And and the, situa- again, and the situation's new. I, guys, it's a new situation. Underwood's a really good coach, too. Like, that that staff had them scouted really well. Like, it, I always have to remind people, the other team's trying, too. Yep. And you're not, you're not the only one. I you was, know, making these moves, and I was impressed with how Illinois was prepared for yep. Iowa State. And then the, now, in in Otz's defense, Iowa State adjusted very well throughout that game, for sure. Yeah, and it just you didn't make enough shots down the street. Yeah, and I thought second half offensively, Iowa State went right after their slow footed guards. I was like, I wish you would have done that, but they settled so much early. And then yeah. when Keyshawn did drive in in the first half, it was these wild, weird traded. It's like it, just it, slow down. It reminded me of Florida there for yeah, a little bit. It's, it's the same. Yeah. Watch the Virginia Tech game. Yeah, it was almost to a T of yeah. this game, and it's just Iowa State. I agree. If you play ten times, you probably win six to eight. But it was a C game for Iowa State and Illinois. Hawkins made a couple it. big shots. Goody made a couple big shots, and you know, tip your cap. And if Iowa State wins the game, I don't. I think we all probably would have had a realistic conversation of like really fortunate to come away with a win there, right? Oh, like, for sure. I don't think anybody walked out of the garden the other night being like, "Man, we really deserve to win that one." No, no. that would have been. That would have been highway robbery had Iowa State pulled that thing off, based yeah, on everything I we've discussed. To- totally agree. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't one of those games you got jobbed by the officials. No, like they just that. called it, it just, tight. They called and we, it tight. We knew that was a possibility. Yeah. I I just uh man, I just think there's there are certain things that you could have could have done early and uh Illinois ran away just enough. They got had enough a bigger, of a buffer. They had a bigger crowd too, yep. you know, and I, I think we all kind of expected that. Long ways from Iowa, hard to get there. Illinois has a much bigger alumni base out in the Northeast, but that cr- their crowd was really good. It yep. was it was a really good crowd, I thought. And I think it's one of those games. If it starts nine nothing the other way or seven nothing, it's over. It, it might be over. Yeah, it didn't. Iowa State let them. Iowa State got fouls early, kind of lost its edge. And then by the time it recovered that edge, it was it was a little bit too little, too late. What about you UConn? Miss is UConn oh. one of the best teams in the history well, of college basketball? They went on a thirty to nothing run yesterday. I know. I just asinine. 
I was texting with Jason Luch during the game against. Um, they look pretty invisible right oh, now. Oh, against San Diego State, and we were both like, "Oh my god!" Like I saw them play last year out at Phil Knight. Yeah. And remember, I came back and I'm like, "God damn!" Like that team is low. This team's way better. Yep. This UConn yep. team is. They well they. Like Klingon, Klingon is just another level. I can't wait to watch him and Edie. Oh, we got to get it. We have to get it. The, the return of the big man. We have to have it. Did you see the uh, tweet that um, Frank Martin put out today? Uh-uh. Really interesting. So he's I, apparently now the head coach at UMass. Yeah. I didn't hey, know. Well, he's trying to get He might be trying to get so out of there. But. He pointed out, he goes... All, he listed off all these teams. It was NC State. It was UConn. It was all these guys that are. Or it was um, Purdue. Yep. About how all of them have dominant big men. Huh. He pointed out Clemson. They got a really good big yeah, guy. Yeah, a couple big guys. And he was like, I'm just saying, like, look at all these teams with these dominant fives. And that's what they run their offense through, though. And it's a little bit like, I will say, like, to an Iowa State fan listening, Iowa State is, is – they are much more of that mindset than they are the analytical of the Hoiberg eras and no the doubt. McDermott eras now. Yep. Like, they want high percentage shots. So – You get a big they, guy. They want as many around the rim as you can get, and then they want open corner threes. Like, that's what Iowa State is looking for. And, like, <laughs> oh, you – oh, well, Brockington, right? Well, he was taking all those long twos, but he made them. So, like, they charted it all, and they're like, well, that's a high-percentage shot for, for us. Him. Like, yeah. they, Martin, I guess what, I, what he was pointing out is, like, big maybe, guys still maybe we are reverting back in it, this new era of college basketball to the big man. Well, and like, look at look at the big dude for NC State. They couldn't guard him. No. He's so big. They couldn't guard him. And I would say the college, for you're right, the last five years, college was trying to be so much like the NBA, you lost the fact that you're not as good at shooters as those guys, you know? Yeah. And a big guy, like an Edie, his percentages are so high because he's that big. He's not a great... This is the crazy thing, because I think we get these two things conflated here. He is a... The, the big guys are dom, can be dominant in college. That doesn't mean they're going to be dominant in the NBA. It's two different games. I think what happened is he was... Is even a first-round pick? He's, he is now. Okay. Just But he's... Because he's had an awesome year. Although it's going to take the right team to to really go down that yeah. route. Because a lot of those guys, they want the Wembenianos who can not only yeah. do that, they can shoot it, they can do all these things. I think college is still not skilled enough. You don't have five shooters around. That a big guy can be super valuable, especially one that you can't guard straight up. And so I think, you know... you. When Iowa State was going to the Hoiberg era, you couldn't get a good big guy because they were going to all the big schools. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's almost flipped. Now, in the portal, big guys are still expensive. However, wing guys are starting to catch up because everyone wants a guy that can shoot it. So while the, 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 the cost is maybe more for a big guy, if you can run your offense through one and you got a dominant one, it's still hard to beat in college. It's still mm -hmm. hard to beat. You just you cannot replicate what a Zach Eady, what a Burns, um, all these guys can do. Klingon, I mean, because then it, they only offensively, but then defensively, there's such a good, great ribbon presence as well. They alter that side too. There's a reason why for 80 years basketball relied on the big man first. Yeah, I mean, at, at the root of it, it's the easiest way to score if you're right next to the basket. Well, I mean, it's it's a little bit compared to football like if you can run the football everything else is easier exactly you know yep. yep and i and i also watching these games in this particular tournament you don't want to overreact to one year but i, I think we've all been aware that college basketball is drastically changing with all these 23 24 year olds out there and stuff and again the point we always make is there's a reason why they're 24 and and still in college basketball cuz they're not skilled enough to be a no-brainer to go to the next level correct so maybe it's 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 going back to more of the old school i think maybe so. we're trending that direction I think, completely well and so to that end you it better, drought proofs you too it does it's a drought exactly you better have two to three guys if i was stayed at burns they probably win the other night i think so yeah <laughs> you throw know the, throw to that guy yeah you're not gonna go through a drought you're right because yeah. you're not reliant on the ball bouncing you're right next to the rim that's why purdue is so good is they do not have droughts and i wanted to ask you it's been my theory for a couple of months now watching Purdue. 
and now I'm watching Burns and who, who's the other one I'm missing? Who's the other stuff? Klingon. Klingon. Yeah. I swear these refs don't know to. Oh, it's impossible. I don't think they know how to ref these guys. No. Because they're so unique now. Like, I feel like specifically with Edie, it's like I'm watching Shaq back in the day. He just moves people by turning. So is it a foul? I don't know. It's hard. I think Purdue gets the best whistle in college basketball he, because of him. He, well, yeah, I agree. And then he does, he does a masterful job of selling whatever contact there is. Yeah, too. no, I, you know, I'm complimenting him. I'm not. That's the one thing, you know, to bring it to Iowa State a little bit, where Audie could do a little bit better of selling the fouls when she is fouled. Sometimes she just tries to power through, which is which is great. But Edie doesn't feel like a great balance of not only finishing, but then also selling the contact. I I think there are, it's fascinating how it's just like football in a way. You know, once, what which once was old is new again. And if you can get old and get big, that is still going to be, at the end of the day, Give me a bunch of six eight to six eleven guys in college basketball over a couple six two to six three guys that like to shoot. Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. We are here presented as always by our friends at the MacDyne Corporation. Um, want to thank our friends at Plaza RV for sponsoring everything we do here during the months of March and April. Plaza RV. Uh, the, if you've if you've been in the market for a camper which i would highly recommend i i mean my camper has changed my life i just love it oh, i look forward to it so much technology in there you can oh still it's work unbelievable from one. Yeah, it's fantastic it's i'm gonna get one of them uh starlink internet kits so uh be bopping and i'm gonna be uh doing some nascar racing wait, coming up this weekend or get, this 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 summer you got the george Strait stapleton concert it's george Strait stapleton concert you're gonna have a Ames Lager 10 or something up at that, We're right? figuring that out. Ames Lager is going to be sold in the stadium. Awesome. So, yes, there's That's beer for that. Time. There's going to be beer for that. Yes. No editorialization here. Yes. Editorialization. But, yes, there will be. Ames Lager will be in Jack Trey Stadium for the uh, Chris Stapleton concert. Who's the other guy? Don't insult me. <laughs> it's the George Strait concert. <laughs> Who else is there? There's like another yeah, decent name. Douche country, there. little big town. I won't even go to that. Who are they? Is that? Uh, yeah, they are they, they like the the Dixie Chicks. They were the ones that sang that song that was really hot, like 15 years. The like, pontoon. Oh, the pontoon. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so yeah. stupid. Such bad. It's such bad country music. They got but some other ones. I do know uh, my buddy Scott from Plaza RV is going to be up there. Uh, for that concert, so look oh, forward to that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. These guys at Plaza, it's totally locally owned, family owned. They right here in Bondurant. I will, you guys, cyclones. If yes, if you're in, do this. Yes, PM me. Around. I yeah. will get you hooked up with an appointment and take you in there. They're phenomenal. And then when you buy one, we'll go take you over to the local <laughs> brewery here. Yes, where you can drink an R. You can drink some Ames Loggers in our driveways if you buy a Plaza RV. We'll do a um, Whipple's Hybrids Big 12 segment coming up. I, I did want to give a quick shout out uh, to Stephanie and Elisa, the Title Nine podcast. Yeah. They're they're calling it quits after a long run with this. Really, I was super disappointed, but I, I I understand why they're why they're doing it. Their last episode, I I believe, is this week. I don't have the schedule from Aiden from everything that we have coming up, but I didn't want to not give them a shout out uh, for what they've done, not only for us, but just promoting women's athletics. I think that uh, this upcoming final four, regardless of, of who's in it and the, and the women, it's, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like you and me have, we've been on the road and done the women's basketball thing for a long time. Like I never thought I would see it as, as hot as it is right now. Yep. It's from a mainstream and Stephanie and Elisa have been, great voices for that over the years. And I mean, basically it's, it's a deal where their kids have gotten older and activities and recording this thing. And I, I, I completely understand, yeah. uh, but I, I, I wanted to just thank them. And, and we also are, we're working on some new programming coming up. That's kind of what our off season is about. So look forward to that, but yeah, they've I, done a great job. And it's, it's been great to, Five years is a long time for a podcast. Yeah, I and mean, it really been awesome. is. I'll never uh, forget bringing them together. I, and I remember the first first time I listened, I was like, "Oh, these guys are going to be rock stars." Mm -hmm. And you know, I think, which is 
I, one of my favorite things is I always like to listen to things that make me think. Mm-hmm. I don't always agree, mm-hmm. but it makes me think. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the point of this whole thing. They made me approach sports differently from listening to their podcast. Yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. Like, I have an, a, a greater no appreciation. And, and just the, the preparation that it took, and, I, and doing a podcast is not easy. Those, those two are always on it, and huge amounts of respect and, and know that Cyclone Fanatic's a little worse off for it. We are. But no doubt about um, that. The contributions they made uh cannot be cannot be oversold with where Fanatic has grown since they joined. No, they're and welcome think, back anytime. I know. But I just uh, thank you guys. Like you and uh, personally for me, um got to know them both and been super supportive for what we're doing on the We Will side and just selfless people that are Iowa Staters at heart. The Whiffle Cybrids Big Twelve segment, we will just I talk about Houston. Shed going down. I, yeah. I mean, I think they would have beaten Duke by ten. They had him, and then Duke laid a complete Easter egg today. My God! I listened to the second half on our way back from the Dude, whole Easter. Horrible. Non-existent the second half like that. Well, they were stuck on forty-two yeah, forever. So bad, so bad. But, sh- but no, yeah, sh- yeah. I feel because ba- Shed, man, they would have. Mm, if he stays healthy, but they just, again, we talked about it even in the Big 12. They were banged up then. The one thing they could not afford was somebody else to go down. And uh, worst case, like 10 minutes into the game. So, that it, you know, and I, it, people are going to make referendums. I saw some people on the internet, as as people do, making say, oh, I guess Houston and Iowa State weren't as good as we thought they were. Uh, think what you want. I mean, yeah. the, the, the data doesn't lie that... You know, you don't you don't luck into being the first conference by a billion. When, when Houston was healthy and rolling, no doubt they were as good as they, I would have loved to see them play UConn. I mean, today I think UConn would beat them by double digits, but yeah, when you had all those healthy Tugler bigs and, and the, yeah, yeah. Tugler, all those guys, like it it is the the Big Twelve didn't have a a great tournament when Baylor got eliminated Kansas didn't surprise no, anybody but none of those eight nine type teams did anything which it, was disappointing interestingly so you'll you'll find in this in the NIL world both Kansas and Houston have been very active of getting their ADs coaches etc speaking to the masses of their fan bases that we need more NIL even though those two are probably the two highest in the big 12 for basketball which but what their message is, is look what happened when we had guys get hurt. Yeah. We're not deep enough. We're not deep enough. We need more guys. Kansas just got uh, a dude from Florida today. He'll be a backup there probably. They paid him a lot. Isn't and it so, interesting that you can draw that parallel to what Iowa State's trying to do right now? Yes. You need deep right? guys that can play. Yeah, yeah. Iowa State has largely was pretty – Fortunate injury wise now for you know, yeah, it's dinged up really for three yeah. years. The whole Otzenberger era, they've been, been but yeah, but look at K- Kansas is literally marketing to its fans right now of look what happened to us because we did not invest enough. <laughs> we spent we need another starting five and they're going to get one. They are going to get one. They and then Houston's not going to lie down quietly either. They got they got guys, they're a mass email to people like we need more, we need more, we need more. And so you're. Do you see Troy Dannon's press conference at Nebraska? Yeah. So, like, I guess the point is, playing time still matters. It is. The it's gonna keep. NILs hasn't slowed down. It's it hasn't slowed down. It's not going to slow down because instead of these schools saying, "Hey, we're good with our three to four studs," they're no, no, we need eight or ten. Yeah. So then the market goes up, and it's it's craziness out there. But yeah, those. All that being said, Big Twelve wise, those schools that struggled this year, it's not their 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 boosters aren't going to be like, oh, that was po- that was money poorly spent. No, 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 they're doubling down. They're saying, no, if we just spend more, we're going to figure it out. And so just it, it this this train is not slowing down. It's I thought it might equalize by now. It hasn't because when you have power and money and and influence involved, there is no ROI. Your ROI is literally your ego. I was mm-hmm. trying to tell people. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Well, neither does honestly owning a sports franchise sometimes. This is the way these boosters are pretending to be involved. I'm not saying I'm not on the Iowa State side, but in general, 
Um, the Kansas's and the Houston's aren't slowing down. Baylor's going to reinvent. TCU will throw a bunch of money. Like the the Big Twelve is going to have a bunch of dollars. Arizona is another one. They're going to throw a bunch of dollars at their roster. So you know the Big Twelve is good this year. It's going to be even better next year. And so that's why Iowa State needs to be proactive and try and load up as much as it can within its means. Well said, my friend. Uh, we will. I don't know if we'll do a Wednesday pod every week during the off season, but we definitely will here this month. I, I think we'll have new, new stuff to talk about on yeah, Wednesday. I I do too. I would be surprised if there's not at least one new member of the basketball team on Wednesday. And again, I'm not trying to just pound you guys for subs, but this is the best time of the year to be a subscriber well, with the us. Portal closes April 18th, so I mean you don't have a lot of time. And it's it's a lot of times, Chris, it's a little bit like musical chairs. Uh, some of the good spots are going to go quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's the interesting part of if you want to go to the portal, you better be in it right now mm-hmm. because it's going to. Well, I saw the kid from Illinois, their big guy. Yep. Danger. Went in today. He went in. Yep. I was like, wow. Yep. Uh, Pop Isaacs went in. Wow. Did he really? Yeah. He'll get a lot of money, won't he? Somebody, yeah, somebody will. I mean, that's I like a guy who I will spend, but. Uh, that's like a. Have. Arizona would call a guy like uh, that. TCU lost two guys. PV's back. PV's in. Um, so it's it's literally you guys. This the whew, hold on because the next two weeks are going to be wild. Um, and I think for Iowa State, it's going to be relatively calm compared to a lot of folks because we have a pretty good idea of who's going to be back. The core, but you still have four spots to fill. Three. Sp- I mean, it just depends on on how you want to, you know, line up the roster here. All right. Um, wild, wild times. We appreciate all of you guys listening. I'm sorry that we couldn't do more on the actual games, but that feels like an eternity <laughs> it ago. It's only Thursday. Yeah. Uh, we will be back on Wednesday for, for this show. Uh, we'll have all of our other great Cyclone Fanatic programming as well. For Brent Bloom, my name is Chris Williams. Happy Easter if you're out there listening on Sunday. If not, uh, have a great work week.